Hello again, it's Dr. Dura Wade from Dad Organicology, here to make uncommon knowledge common. So our topic today is, what is a pap smear? Pap smear is a test to screen for cervical cancer. January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to remind you about the importance of pap smears. I firmly believe that no woman should die of cervical cancer, or no woman should be diagnosed with advanced stage cervical cancer in this day and age. This is because we have so many ways to prevent cervix cancer. So let me explain to you what a pap smear is. You go to your gynecologist, she performs a pelvic exam, she puts a speculum inside the vagina and visualizes the cervix. The cervix is all the way in the vagina. She uses a brush to get the cells on the surface of the cervix and then we send that specimen or that collection to the lab. The lab then tells us whether, that's, whether those cells are normal or not. So when you get a call from me and I say your pap smear is abnormal, we're saying that there are some abnormal looking cells on that cervix. So just because you have an abnormal pap smear does not mean you have cervix cancer. Uh, it actually takes about 10 to 20 years before abnormal cells turn to cervix cancer. And so the reason we say get your pap smear regularly is because we can interrupt the process of abnormal cells to cancer. We can stop it from turning to cancer if we catch it early enough. So what causes an abnormal pap smear? The most common cause of abnormal pap smear is HPV, human papillomavirus. Human papillomavirus is the most common sexually transmitted virus in the United States. It is so common, people don't know they have it until we do a pap smear and tell them it's positive. It's frustrating because it's not something you can see visually most of the time on your partner. There are types that you can see, but the one that causes abnormal pap test, you can't see it. But condoms is not 100% protective against HPV. Like I'll have some of my patients, they'll say, well, I use condoms all the time. How did this come up? It's because it's transmitted from skin to skin contact. I always tell my patients, do not have sex in the dark. Turn the lights on. Look at your partner's privates and make sure there are no warts, lesions, anything there. I've heard people say to me, well, it looked like a skin tag. Don't assume it's a skin tag if it's in the genital area. It is not, okay? So HPV is from skin to skin contact. Another way to protect yourself from contracting HPV is practicing you know, sexual risk reduction. You know, having multiple partners increases your chances of getting that virus. Like I said, a lot of people have it, they don't know they have it. There's no way to really test men for it. Men don't have a cervix. We only find this HPV when we do pap smears on women. Not having multiple partners can, can reduce your chances of HPV. Not smoking. HPV likes nicotine. It hangs around when there's uh, nicotine. So not smoking can help your body clear the HPV virus faster. There's no cure for HPV. There's no medicine we give you that gets it out of your body. Your immune system has to clear it. So you have to optimize your immune system with vaccination there's HPV vaccines. Optimize your immune system by not smoking so that the HPV doesn't stick around. Um, taking a multivitamin, being in your best health possible so your immune system is strong, fights off the virus, and clear it out of your body. Uh, HPV sticking around is what causes it to make changes to your cervix, and that's what causes your pap smear to be abnormal. And if year after year after year, that HPV continues to act on that cervix, we don't interrupt it, we don't biopsy, we don't operate on it, that's when it can cause cancer. We recommend paps frequently because we can catch these things early and prevent cervix cancer in women. So how often should you get a pap test? Uh, initially it was every year. And now the recommendations are every three years in some women and every five years in some women. And this is because, like I said, from abnormal pap to cancer, it takes decades to happen. So women don't need to necessarily have a pap test every year. However, women are not showing up to their annual exams anymore because they think they're good for three years or they're good for five years. I still recommend an annual exam every year, a pelvic exam every year, meaning we get to look inside the vagina and look at the cervix, even if we don't collect that sample. Okay, so I still recommend seeing me every year for your annual exam. That way we don't miss an opportunity to do a pap or we don't miss something starting. Um, if you'd like to learn more about shaving, your periods, endometriosis, check out my playlist. I'll link it below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. 
Thank you. I'll see you next time.